Hey y'all, Ruth here with Olive Gray Avenue. Welcome to our channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to build a stone garden border. So if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up below and hit that subscribe button. I'm gonna give you a little bit of background on how we decided to do this project, the design, the concept, and where we're going from here, because this is just phase one. Now let me just say, we are not professionals by any means. DIY is truly DIY. We've never done this before, and usually when we are planning out a project, we will research. So we will hit up Google, YouTube, we'll scan the internet for information on how to build something or how to do something. This project in particular, we weren't really able to do that. We could find little to no information for how to actually build this dang wall. So my husband and I moved into this house about two years ago, and we've been obsessively thinking about how to landscape the front of the house since then. Okay, maybe I, I've probably been the one obsessively thinking about it. We have been trying to figure out what we wanted to do for this space, and we have not touched the landscaping in the front since. I wanted to make sure that we didn't do anything to the landscaping until we had a full plan and design idea of exactly what we wanted. Here in Central Texas where we live, limestone is everywhere. It's on buildings, it's on homes, it's on landscape. So what I wanted to do was incorporate limestone. I do love it even though it is everywhere, but I didn't want to just have the same old, same old. At our first home, we did do some landscaping. We did hire a company to do it, and it was beautiful, it was great work, but it was just simple landscaping. It was limestone just around the garden beds, and we had some black basalt stones in the beds. I loved it, but it is very basic and not what I wanted to do at this house. I wanted an upgrade from that to create something that we were proud of and we were happy to come home to every day. So we decided on a concept of stone and ultra modern metal. I actually fell in love with the concept of metal edging when I was running through the neighborhood and saw a brand new house go up with metal edging and they actually had limestone too. It was like perfect. So we do have a big house with a lot of landscaping needs. We will be breaking this up into phases. This wall is just phase one, just the very beginning of this project. We still have multiple stone walls to build and we will be incorporating the metal after all the stone is built. I'll be honest, this project has intimidated me from the very beginning because like I said, we didn't have a description or a tutorial to follow on how to do this. We are basically making it up and so that's why I say we're not professionals, but we have taken bits and pieces from what we have been able to find so that we have compiled all of the details that we needed to be successful in building this wall. So we're saving you the trouble from trying to figure out this on your own and you can follow what we did and see if it works for you as well. Below in the description of this video is where I'm going to list all of the supplies that you'll need, everything that we used. If you'd like more information, more details about this project, supplies, or anything else, you can check out the blog. It's olivegreatavenue.com, which will also be linked down below in the description as well. So we'll start with step one, which will be to prepare the site. What we did, we had a lot of brush and weeds. We cleared out that area, we pulled out all of the bushes that were overgrown there, all of the weeds, and made a nice clean work area. Then we began to dig the trench. You'll want the trench to be a couple of inches wider on either side of the stone so it can fit nicely into the ground and have a secure base. You'll also want to make sure you dig a couple of inches down into the ground. We dug about two inches because we knew we were going to fill with some gravel. That leads us to step two. So step two will be to create your base. The base is gonna be of gravel and sand. What you'll wanna do is put about an inch of gravel down in the trench to create a stable base for the stones. You also want your base to be porous enough so that water can go under the wall and not through it and break it down. Once you have a layer of gravel down, you'll want to tamp it. Tamping is just to basically compress material. Typically, you'll use an actual tamper. We didn't have a tamper, so we used a wooden block. That's not conventional, and a lot of people will probably tell you not to do that, but it worked for us. So we didn't want to buy a tamper. We rented one before, and this is just what we decided to do for this project, and it worked just fine. Once you have your first layer of gravel down and have it tamped, then you'll put some sand over top, and that will fill in the cracks of the gravel and create an even more sturdy base, but still be porous enough for water to go under the wall. Throughout these steps, we used a 48-inch level 
to make sure that as we went, the gravel, the sand, and everything was level. Now we have step three, which is to dry stack the stone. You want to dry stack the stone to make sure all the stones you have fit properly. And if you need to cut them down, you have an opportunity to do so now. If you do need to cut them, it's a simple process. Ours is limestone, so it's a pretty soft rock. What I used to cut down the stones was a simple brick chisel and a 10 pound hammer. You'll want to score a line all the way around the stone and just keep going around until it breaks off. To ensure that our garden border was perfectly level and in a straight line, we created a line level with a piece of string and two stakes. We staked it down, leveled it, and made sure that the stone border went perfectly level with the house and the ground. If one of the stones is sitting up higher or lower than another, all you have to do is shove some gravel underneath or dig it into the gravel a little bit. The gravel doesn't have to be an inch deep, it's just a good base for the actual garden border. In step four, you'll make the mortar. This is where the magic starts to happen. The mortar mix that we used was actually Portland cement. You'd think that the majority of your mortar would be mortar mix, but it's not. Three parts sand, one part mortar, already mixed in here. I have a bucket of water that I'm gonna be pouring in to make sure it's the right consistency. And then I just have a drill with this bit on it. Um, or this mixer, and this is specifically for mixing mortar. I wanted to make sure there was enough moisture in the mortar mix so that it would spread fairly easily, but still have structure to hold up the stones when they were placed on top. as it was because it truly was so easy to do and I think it's funny that I was ever intimidated by this project because it was honestly one of the easiest things we've ever done here it is all complete it's been about a month since we did it so this is how it looks as of today you can see that we added some rose bushes and they've been growing so nice they love the Sun in the spot where they're in and the wall has held up terrifically we haven't had any issues with it whatsoever thank you for being here and watching my video I really appreciate it if you liked it give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe below to get notifications for any new videos that we post in the future. Also, leave me a comment below. See you next time. Today we're going to be talking about why the are there so there's so much noise. It is so effing loud. You have to do that literally in front of my house. <sighs> Something's gonna die. What's that? What is that? Do you hear me cursing myself? Yes. To help us continue to make these channels. Can you drive slower? Just a little bit slower. Why is the wind blowing so much?